Questions? It is now time for a question period. The member from Leeds, Grenville. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, hope you give me some leeway as the uh, as our premier sprints to her seat. Uh, my question yes, is, right. is to, in fact, the premier. Um, premier, the RCMP raided the headquarters of the Ontario Provincial Police Association on Friday. Uh, yesterday, it was announced that three senior OPP officials, the president, the vice president, and the CAO, are all taking voluntary leaves of absences while the investigation is ongoing. Back in mid-December, I wrote to the chief electoral officer and the commissioner of the OPP, and an investigation has been launched ever since that involves your deputy chief of staff and a senior liberal operative in Sudbury. To this day, both of those individuals have yet to step aside, even as the investigation into their alleged bribes continues. Question. Premier, why is it that individuals who represent our police know to step aside when they're under investigation, but your staff Thank does you. not? Well, Mr. Speaker, the member opposite knows that uh, this is an active police matter and that, uh, that I'm not, uh, not going to be able to comment any farther. Um, the member from Prince Edward Hastings will come to order, and the member from Lanner will come to order as well. I know. Mr. Speaker, on the, uh, on the issue of the uh, Sudbury by-election, Mr. Speaker, I've been very, very clear that uh, there is an investigation ongoing. I've, uh, I've been clear about uh, the trajectory of my, uh, uh, what my intentions are in terms of uh, if there is a charge that uh, Pat Cerbera would step aside, Mr. Speaker, and I've made that statement publicly, and uh, we're going to let the investigation take place outside of this legislature, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. Well, uh, back to the Premier. You know, Premier, I can't believe in a scrum this morning you acknowledge that you still have yet to meet with the Ontario Provincial Police about the ongoing investigation. But then again, when pressed on your alleg the allegations against your staff, you were quoted as saying, and I'll quote you, I will not force someone to resign over allegations I do not believe to be true. That's her quote. The people who are investigating you know when to do the right thing, and they've done it. The police have done the right thing, Premier. My question is, is your staff above the law? Well, again, Mr. Speaker, I, I take this matter very seriously. I've spoken to it repeatedly. Um, the independent investigation is ongoing, Mr. Speaker, and I just, uh, I just would remind the uh, the member opposite that uh, you know I think he himself said that uh, it's important to, and I quote, stop interfering in an ongoing investigation and let it run its course. Unquote. We have to make sure that uh, kind of interference doesn't happen, Mr. Speaker. I'm not going to do that, and I don't think uh, the other side should either, Mr. Speaker. Final supplementary. Well, thanks again. Back to the, uh, the Premier. In a news release, the OPPA wrote it is in the best interest of the association and its membership, effective immediately, the members take Minister of Economic Development from, order. from the OPP Association. Premier, the opposition, the public, and the police know that it is in the best interest that your operatives step aside Absolutely. while they are under investigation. Premier, will today be the day that your government finally demonstrates integrity? Premier, will today be the day that Pat Sorbera and Jerry Lougheed step aside? Thank you very much, uh, Speaker, and appreciate, uh, I appreciate uh, you acknowledging me. Speaker, I want to remind the member opposite again that, uh, that uh, the, the OPPA investigation he refers to or any other uh, uh, police investigation is exactly that, Speaker. The member from uh, Stormont will come to order, and I would almost ask him to withdraw if I thought I heard what I thought I heard. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As I was saying, these these are these are matters which which, uh, which are being uh, dealt by the police. These are live investigations. We should respect that, uh, Speaker. As we've said repeatedly, uh, these are uh, these matters to be taken seriously. Uh, they no, uh, need not to be uh, discussed here in this house. Uh, we yes, uh, I heed the advice of the member opposite when he said that uh, let the police do their work. Let the police do the investigation. Thank you. We respect that. Thank you. No question. The member from Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My question to the Premier. Premier Premier, we have risen again and again in this House to try to compel you to do the right thing concerning the Sudbury by-election scandal by removing 
Pat Sabera and Jerry Lougheed from their positions of power and authority. You are so off the mark on this issue. Yesterday, we learned that three senior officials from the Ontario Provincial Police Association stepped aside or were asked to step aside when they became the subject of a police investigation. Premier, will you do the right thing and remove your chief of staff, your deputy chief of staff, Pat Sabera, and your political bagman, Jerry Lougheed, until this police investigation has been completed? Well, Mr. Speaker, let me just uh, remind the, uh, the member opposite that the OPP and the OPPA are, uh, they operate entirely independently, Mr. Speaker, and I have no knowledge, no knowledge of uh, the situation there, and it's an active police matter, and obviously I can't comment on it. Mr. Well, I think you knew I was coming for you. The member from Renfrew, come to order, please. The member from Lanark, come to order. And Mr. Speaker, I've been very clear about uh, our position in terms of cooperating with the authorities in an investigation that's taking place outside of this House, Mr. Speaker, and uh, we will continue to work with the authorities as, uh, as is appropriate, not in this legislature, Mr. Thank Speaker. Thank you. Supplementary. Premier, what a sad response to such a simple question. On election night last year, you said that the people had put their trust in you and that you wouldn't let them down. You said that you would lead with integrity that people would not be taken for granted. Such hollow words. Premier, you love to point to examples of people doing the right thing. Well, here's a clear-cut example of just that. The OPPA officials who are under police investigation have the decency to step aside until the matter is cleared up. Why is it that police officers in this province can do the right thing, but Liberal can't? Liberals can't. Why won't you put Jerry Lougheed and Pat Sabera in the penalty box Till this is completed. Is that simply because of liberal arrogance? Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. I think the member opposite question. knows that we have something called presumption of innocence uh, in our system of democracy, where we do not judge people until they are proven guilty, if that's the case. And that determination, Speaker, is made by, by the judge, not by the members of this House. And we should respect that, Speaker. In fact, Speaker, even the chief electoral officer in his report said, I'm neither deciding to prosecute a matter nor determining any, any, anyone's guilt or innocence. Those decisions, respectively, for prosecutors and judges. And, Speaker, the chief electoral officer is absolutely right. It is a matter for, for a judge to decide if any charges are laid. As we know, in this matter, no charges have been laid. There's a live investigation. We should respect that police investi investigation, and we should not interfere in that matter whatsoever. In our system, democracy, pe Answer. Speaker, people are innocent what until they're proven guilty. Halliburton. In this case, everyone is innocent because there's been no Thank charges you. that have been laid. Thank you very much. Final supplementary. Thank you, Premier. The arrogance over there is something that I believe you will live to regret. I remind you again. Three officials from the Ontario Provincial Police Association have stepped aside. They have done the right thing. We even find out today that you even haven't even interviewed with the OPP about the Sudbury by-election scandal. Premier, you were so quick. You were so quick to interview with the chief electoral officer about this scandal, but you can't find the time to interview with the OPP. Is it because the chief electoral officer is a provincial appointee, but the OPP carry handcuffs? Thank you. Minister. Uh, uh, speaker, again, um, I don't know how many times uh, we need to remind the members opposite that this is not the place or the time in the House uh, to be interfering in a police investigation. Uh, in fact, if the member from uh, Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke looked to the member from Lee's Granville, he should take his advice, which is not to interfere in an ongoing police investigation. It is, it is disappointing, Speaker, that the Conservatives, uh, as being the official opposition, are not focusing on the real issues that are facing Ontarians. They don't, don't want to talk about uh, things that will, that will help. The uh, member from Lanark is uh, warned, and the member from Prince Edward Hastings, second time. Carry on and finish, please. Speaker, it is time that we focus on real issues at hand. We need to focus on making sure that we are growing our economy. We need to make sure that we are creating good-paying jobs for all hard-working Ontarians on all four corners of this province. Answer. And I ask the opposition to really start focusing back on things that people have sent us to, to talk about, and that is our economy, our job. Thank you. New question, the leader of the third party.
Thank you, Speaker. My question is for the Premier. When it comes to the Sudbury bribery scandal, this Premier is in lockdown mode. I have a question, and that is, is that on Pat Barrow's advice, Speaker? So, Mr. Speaker, let me, uh, let me just say that um, let me just let me just say that uh, I have answered this question many many times, um, and I have been very clear, Mr. Speaker. Next one. Carry on, please. Um, and I've been very very clear, Mr. Speaker, that. Uh, there is an investigation ongoing, and there was some heckling about, you know, I haven't, I haven't had a meeting with the authorities. That's being scheduled, Mr. Speaker, and I, I just think, I just think the members opposite need to understand that that's a scheduling issue. And I have, I have said repeatedly that I am cooperating with the authorities. I will cooperate with the authorities, uh, and Mr. Speaker, that was always my intention, and it's what we're doing, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Supplementary. Has Pat Sorbera been providing management issues briefings to the Premier on the Pat Sorbera issue, Speaker? Premier. Mr. Speaker, um, again, uh, you know the the fact is I've made a public statement. I've made a, a statement about the situation in Sudbury. I've made a statement about my decision to uh, to have. Uh, Glenn Tebow be our candidate in Sudbury, Mr. Speaker. Glenn Tebow, who apparently is an amazing photographer, Mr. Speaker, because the photograph on the front of the Globe yesterday of the, uh, the terrible derailment in Gogama was taken by our, uh, our uh, member for Sudbury, Mr. Speaker. And you know, that is an issue that I think is very worthy of our discussion in here, Mr. Speaker. It's a, it's a very important issue, rail safety, and it's one that we should all be calling on the federal government to work with us on, Mr. Speaker and make sure yes, that sir. we have all the protections in place for people across this province. Thank you. Final supplement. Well, Speaker, I'm not sure I got an answer to whether or not Pat Sorbera is providing advice to the Premier on the Pat Sorbera issue. I know Pat Sorbera wasn't on the Premier's staff when the Premier was promising to change and to make things open and transparent around here. I also noticed that the Premier hasn't used the word openness once in this place since the Liberal bribery scandal broke, and she only used the word transparency once. She won't even say whether or not Pat Sorbera attends cabinet meetings. It's obvious that the Premier is being neither open nor transparent, refusing to answer questions. So I wonder, has Pat Sorbera told the Premier to dial back the rhetoric about openness and transparency around here? Yeah, Premier. Premier. Sorry. <laughs> Well, Mr. Speaker, um, okay, where I'm going, where I'm going with this is, Mr. Speaker, I, uh, I studied linguistics, and this would be an interesting exercise to go through which words each of us uses in the house and the number of times and count those words, and, and then work up an exercise for a linguistics student, Mr. Speaker, to kind of see if we could get at the uh, the underlying themes that uh, run through our. Uh, Run through our discourse, but Mr. Speaker, again, let me just say uh, we are cooperating with the authorities in an investigation that's going on outside of this house. Um, we're working cooperatively with the OPP to set up a meeting, Mr. Speaker, and that's what I mean when I talk about working cooperatively uh, with the authorities. That is happening outside of this house, Mr. Speaker, and the openness that uh, I have, Answer. the openness that I have demonstrated, Mr. Speaker, in terms of. Committee work, Mr. Speaker, in terms of Thank telling you. the people of, the, of Ontario what we're doing is exactly the right policy. Thank you. New question. The leader of the third party. This question is for the Premier Speaker. The Liberals seem to think that uh, the law, that good ethics, that integrity, that the responsibility of economic to questions development come to order. end at the door to this legislature. Will the Premier stop hiding behind the OPP investigation and start answering questions like whether Pat Cerbera continues to attend cabinet meetings? Premier. Mr. Speaker, I have been very clear about where I will be answering questions on this specific issue, and that is with the authorities, Mr. Speaker, as part of an investigation that's happening outside of this house. And I would just, I would just remind the, I would remind the leader.
of the third party, much as she wants to stand in judgment of people, that the chief electoral officer clearly stated, the and I quote, I am neither order. deciding to prosecute a matter nor determining anyone's guilt or innocence. Those decisions are respectively for prosecutors and judges, unquote. That process is underway, Mr. Speaker. Those decisions have not been made, and they will not be made by the Deputy leader of the House third leader party Dorner, or anyone else in this legislature, Mr. Speaker. There are four OPP anti-rackets investigations into this Liberal government, but the Premier seems to think it's okay because the investigation is out there and she won't tolerate questions in here. This place, Speaker, belongs to Ontarians, and Ontarians deserve answers from their Premier. It doesn't matter whether those questions come in the interrogation room, whether they come at a media scrum, or right here in the House, Speaker. Ontarians deserve answers on the Sudbury bribery scandal. Who made the decision to offer Andrew Olivier a job to step aside? Mr. Speaker, you know, it actually does matter. And I, you know, not, not only do I tolerate questions, I embrace questions. I am here day after day to answer questions, Mr. Speaker. about Gogama. I thought there might be a question about assets, Mr. Speaker, and investment in transit and transportation infrastructure. I thought, Mr. Speaker, that there might be a question about a whole range of issues that are important business of this government. But I am here, and I am answering this question. And I will say it does matter what words we use, Mr. Speaker. And her member, the leader of the third party, member to her right, knows this. He said, the member for Timmins, James Bay, said, Answer. quote, you do have a larger responsibility to make sure you're careful in your use of your words so that you don't interfere in any way, unquote. And that's true for me. Thank you. Final supplementary. Well, Speaker, with all due respect, I think that the opposition and the people of Ontario would rather have the Premier answer questions than embrace them. <laughs> the Premier won't say who made the decisions in the bribery scandal. She won't even answer a simple question about the meetings Pat Cervera has attended since the bribery investigation became public, which has nothing to do with the investigation at hand. The Premier doesn't have any evidence for her version of events. She won't even explain explain why the story that she's been clinging to is undercut by every single piece of evidence that we currently know exists. She insists that she behaved nobly and everything is above board. If everything's A-OK, -okay, can the Premier explain why it is that she's more comfortable answering questions in the OPP interrogation room Question. than she is here in Ontario's legislature? Minister of Community Safety and Correctional Services. Minister of Community Safety and Correctional well, speak, Services. Speaker, what the Premier wants to talk about, and we all should be talking about, the issues that are important to Ontarians. Now, I asked the, ask the leader of the third party, if she wants to play the word count game, let's play the word count. How many times the NDP has spoken about the minimum wage in this House? How many times the NDP has talked about raises for public support workers in this House? How many times the NDP has talked about raising child care workers' wages in this House? How many times NDP has talked about public transit in this house, Speaker? Speaker, that is the problem. They have lost their soul. They have lost their values. They, have, they don't stand for anything, and they want to talk about anything else but the real issues for Ontarians. New question. doesn't help when he walks by and makes a, a heckle. Order, please. Start the clock. The member from Kitchener, Conestoga. Thank you. Uh, my question is to the Premier and Premier, my constituents, thank you for tolerating my question today. <laughs> Premier, your predecessors, Ferguson, Hepburn, Frost, Davis, Peterson, and Ray, they all have one thing in common. All had at least one cabinet resignation during their watch. Many with more than one 
and many due to allegations, investigations, and or concerns that prompted action to ensure accountability. Chris Stockwell, Jim Wilson, Bob Runciman, cousin Greg Sobera, Mike Cole, and David Kaplan all went on to take the honourable step aside. Heck, even Dalton McGinty got out of Dodge when the weight of accountability became too great. Yep. Yesterday, three senior OPP union officials, Question. one a former Liberal co uh, candidate, stepped aside. Premier, take the lead. Ensure bribery investigations against your deputy chief of staff aren't conducted while the alleged culprit Thank remains you. in your office. Ask. Thank you. Senior. Mr. Speaker, well, I welcome the question from the uh, the opposition member, Mr. Speaker, uh, and you know I. I value the ability in this House to have a debate, Mr. Speaker. I think it's an extremely important part of the democratic process. It's extremely important that the opposition have the opportunity to, uh, to hold government to account. I think it is incredibly uh, important and central to the, uh, to the workings of a democratic system, Mr. Speaker. What is also essential, Mr. Speaker, is that there be a separation between uh, an investigation that's going on, Mr. Speaker, that really is not a a political process that is a, a process that has to happen apart from the uh, the political machinations, the political debate in this house, and that has to happen outside the legislature. So I am going to take part in. I am taking part in that investigation, Mr. Speaker. Answer. Working with the authorities, Mr. Speaker, and uh, I have said I would do that, and that's exactly Thank what you. I will do. Supplementary. Yes, uh, back to the premier. Volume reverse certificates are more important. Premier, your deputy premier is right. Your continued rope-a-dope refusal to be accountable is getting so boring. It's terrible. That said, today marks a significant milestone in your deflect, dither, and delay strategy. Today not only marks the passing of the 100th question yardstick on the exact same subject, it also marks exactly one month since the OPP announced their intention to bring you in to discuss the bribery offers clearly heard on the Olivier Gate tapes. Premier, on this milestone day, for your sake, for your government's sake, even for the media's sake, do the right thing. Cancel Have Pat Silvera and Jerry Law we'll step aside and finally give some straight answers on this whole sordid affair so we can all move on. Yep. Well, Mr. Speaker, again, I've said that uh, we are going to take part in, and I am going to take part in the investigation that's happening outside of this House. We've been in touch with the OPP, Mr. Speaker. We're arranging an interview, Mr. Speaker, and we're working with them to arrange dates. I mean, if the question is, when am I going to meet with the OPP, the question is when we can arrange a date for that to happen, Mr. Speaker, and that discussion is ongoing. But I have been clear, Mr. Speaker, that I've been very clear that I will work with the authorities, Member but that Oxford that investigation has to take place outside of this House, not in this legislature, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. Yeah. A new question, the member from Timmins, James Bank. My question is to the Premier. Premier, we learned yesterday that the OPPA, after an investigation, members of the executive board stood aside in order to allow uh, things to unfold and so that they took their resignation uh, I will try Minister again. Speaker, of Economic Development. We've learned that three members of the OPP Association are under investigation by the RCMP for what? We don't know. But unlike the Sudbury investigation, there doesn't appear to be taped evidence. Interesting to note, however, that two of the officials have stepped aside while the investigation is underway. No charges, no findings of guilt or innocent, but they stepped aside. Why won't the Premier's Deputy Chief of Staff and her Police Services Board appointee step aside while the bribery investigations are underway? Thank you. Mr. Thank you. Speaker, as I said, as I said uh, I know nothing about the investigation that's going on in, in the, uh, the OPPA, and the OPP and the OPPA are separate uh, organizations. They're independent organizations, Mr. Speaker. On the situation, on the situation that we are dealing with, I've been clear. Uh, I've been clear, Mr. Speaker, about my position. I've been clear about the decision that I made regarding the uh, candidacy in uh, in Sudbury, Mr. Speaker. And I've been clear that uh, we're working with the authorities on the investigation that is taking place outside of this legislature. Thank you. Supplementary. Yes. Sir. Premier, what drives people back home crazy is the double standard that your government has when it comes to accountability. Why is it that members of this assembly, when they've been in similar situations, have done the right thing and stood aside? The OPPA has done the right thing. They stood aside, but you have a different standard. Oh, no, you don't have to follow the, any type of standard. You don't have to follow the law. People just keep on going on the way they were. 
People expect their government to be different in the sense of making sure that you take responsibility. So I ask you again, why is there a double standard for Liberal people while it's not the same for anybody else? What about Thank you very energy? much, Speaker. I think, Speaker, what's driving people crazy at home is that, is that the opposition parties are not focusing on the real issues of the day. That's what people are talking about, and that's what people are concerned about. Uh, speaker, what they want is the members opposite really taking the time in the question period and, and, and ask, I put government to account on issues that are important to them, like creating jobs in their communities, like making sure that we are building public transit in our communities, like making sure that we have got uh, quality health care and good schools are running. Uh, in our community, Speaker, that's what that's what we were elected to do. That's what my constituents wants me to focus on, and I'm sure the members opposite are hearing from their constituents as well that they should be focusing on real issues, issues that are important directly to their communities, and stop stop scandal mongering. Thank you, Speaker. New no question, the member from Davenport. Mr. Speaker, and my question is to the Minister of Education. I know that Ontario's publicly funded education system stands as one of the best in the world. This progress that we've made is the result of the dedication of the dedication work and vision of this Liberal government, working hand-in-hand -hand with the education community to create a world-class system. I am proud to be part of a government that recognizes the importance of investing in people, specifically through investing in education. We are proud of the progress we have made across Ontario and all all of our four diverse publicly funded school systems, the English public, English Catholic, French public and French Catholic systems. Mr. Speaker, our government is focused on ensuring success across all of our publicly funded systems, including the French and Catholic boards. We believe the Catholic boards play an important part of our vibrant and diverse education system. That's certainly true in my great riding of Davenport, where we have a number of wonderful Catholic schools. Question. Mr. Speaker, through you to the minister, can the minister share with his house how we can continue to ensure we remain committed to all publicly funded education Thank systems you. across Ontario, including the Catholic systems. Thank you, Speaker, and thank you to the member from Davenport, who I know is a strong supporter of Catholic education. And as I said, as I mentioned earlier, today the friends and advocates of Catholic education are here at Queen's Park, and I'd like to welcome supporters for the, from the Ontario Catholic School Trustees Association, the Ontario English Catholic Teachers Association, and the Assembly of Catholic Bishops of Ontario, who will be here later in the day. And indeed, as the member says, together we have indeed built an excellent system. Over the past 10 years, we've been able to raise the graduation rate from 68 percent to 83 percent. And our government remains committed to providing an excellent education, and that includes the Catholic school Thank system. You. Supplementary. So thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to the Minister. We are recognized around the world as having one of the best publicly funded education systems in the English-speaking world, and I have two young sons that are, uh, that are part of the uh, Catholic School Board here in the city, and I know firsthand this is so true. And I know our government's renewed vision, achieving excellence, continues to focus on basics like reading, writing, and math, while placing an emphasis on other skills like critical thinking, communication, and collaboration. Part of our government's plan entails working with our four diverse publicly funded school systems, the English public, English Catholic, French public, and French Catholic systems, to ensure students continue to achieve excellence and success in my riding of Davenport and across the province. Supporting a world-class education system is part of our government's economic plan that is creating Question. jobs for today and tomorrow. Mr. Speaker, through you to the minister, can the minister share with his house how our commitment to working with all boards across Across Ontario Thank has you. helped ensure student success and well-being. Yes, thank you, Speaker. You know, we want every child and student on Ontario to gain the knowledge, skills, and personal characteristics that will allow them to be successful, productive, and actively engaged citizens. By working with all four publicly funded school systems across Ontario, we've a lot to be proud of when it comes to our accomplishments in education. We've invested $12 billion in school infrastructure since 2003, 
All four- and five-year-olds now have access to full-day kindergarten, and our students remain competitive in math performing above the OECD average. On April 9, 2014, we released a renewed vision for education entitled Achieving Excellent, a renewed vision for education in Ontario. Yes, sir. We will continue to work with all of our education partners, including our friends from Friends and Advocates of Catholic Education, to ensure that Thank all you. our students achieve success. Speaker, my question is for the Premier. As we saw yesterday with the RCMP investigation of the OPPA, when others are under investigation, they step away from active duty so that they are unable to share notes and talk to other individuals also under investigation. Yet you have taken a very different course of action with Pat Sobera. She still works in your office where she is under your direct supervision and direction. After three weeks of daily questioning by the opposition and the media, it is impossible to believe that you have not discussed the details of the allegations made by the Chief Electoral Officer in his report from February 19. Why are you more interested in protecting Pat Sobera than ensuring the investigation can proceed without concerns that stories are being changed or emails deleted? Question. Mr. Speaker, uh, again, and I, um, I challenge the premise of the question from the member opposite, and the member opposite can believe what she chooses to believe, but I hope she believes the uh, chief electoral officer when he uh, wrote this, Mr. Speaker, and I quote, I am neither deciding to prosecute a matter nor determining anyone's guilt or innocence. Those decisions are respectively for, for prosecutors and judges, unquote. So, Mr. Speaker, that's why there's an investigation going on. It is going on outside of this House, and uh, we're working with the authorities, as I said we would, Mr. Speaker. Speaker. Thank you. Supplementary. Speaker, it's not what I believe. It's what the people of Ontario believe and what they want answers from. The Chief Electoral Officer's report was released almost a month ago. Police officers, teachers, lawyers, even cabinet ministers understand they need to step away from active duty when investigations are ongoing. Even at administrative duty would be an improvement. What makes you think that you and your staff are above the law? Well, Mr. Speaker, again, this is this is another question where um, the uh, the opposition is asking me to is asking me to answer questions, which I have done. But they're asking me to answer these questions in such a way that uh, that I would be interfering in an investigation that's going on outside of this house, and then and then they would be the first to criticize if I did that. So, Mr. Speaker, there's you know the, the fact is I have to do what I have said that I would do. I said that I will work with the authorities, and we are doing that, Mr. Speaker. We're working to set up a meeting with the OPP. I've been very clear that we will cooperate with the investigation, but, Mr. Speaker, I've been equally clear that that investigation has to take place outside of the legislature. Thank you. Your question, the member from Bramley, Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Now, I, I want to preempt. I know the Premier might try to answer this question by saying this is not about guilt or innocence, but I'm talking about the seriousness of the offence. Criminal offences related to bribery. Up the clock, please. The uh, deputy house leader is warned. Carry on. Thank you. Criminal offences related to bribery are quite serious. In fact, Section 125 of the Criminal Code of Canada, influencing or negotiating appointments or dealing in offices, is an indictable offence and can carry up to five years in prison. Now, it's a serious offence, but the Premier doesn't seem to be taking it very seriously at all that her Deputy Chief of Staff, Pat Sobera, is facing criminal investigations. Does the Premier really think that this scandal shouldn't concern us? Well, Mr. Speaker, I've said over and over again that I do take this matter very seriously. I take it very seriously. I take it seriously enough, Mr. Speaker, that I will answer the questions in the appropriate venue, not in the legislature where the investigation is not taking place. So those investigative questions are taking place outside of the legislature. And I would have thought, I think the member opposite is a trained lawyer, I would have thought that he would have understood that that uh, independent investigation needed to take place outside of this house, Mr. Speaker. 
Supplementary. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Well, I'm glad the Premier recognizes that this offence is very serious. Let me continue by pointing out that violating the Elections Act is also very serious. In fact, a general offence of the Election Act carries a $5,000 fine, but an offence related to bribery is considered a corrupt practice, and it actually includes a fine of $25,000 and imprisonment of up to two years. Now. Just like violating the criminal code, violating the criminal, the elections code, the elections act is also a very severe offence. Now, can the premier explain to me this? This is not about the investigation. This is a simple question. Can the premier explain why, with two serious investigations, that despite these serious penalties, Pat Sabera shouldn't just be put on leave? Well, again, Mr. Speaker, let me let me go back to what the chief electoral officer uh, said, and I know that the. Uh, the member opposite uh, takes very seriously what uh, officers of the legislature say, and uh, the chief electoral officer said this, clearly stated, and I quote, I'm neither deciding to prosecute a matter nor determining anyone's guilt or innocence. Those decisions are respectively for prosecutors and judges, unquote. Mr. Speaker, there's an investigation going on. It's taking place outside of the legislature. Thank you. No question. The member from Barrie. Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care. Every year, Every year, dietitians of Canada and dietitians working all over Ontario help promote healthy eating through celebrating Nutrition Month in March. I know my constituents in Barrie are focusing on prom promoting healthy eating. The goal of the 2015 National Nutrition Month campaign is to inspire Canadians to eat better at work and make other positive changes for a healthy workplace. Registered dietitians work in many settings in Ontario, bringing evidence-based nutrition and food advice to consumers, clients, and patients. As regulated health professionals, the public can have confidence that registered dietitians have the training and skills to provide safe, ethical, and competent care. Sure. Welcome to the dietitians that are here with us today. Mr. Speaker, through you, I ask the minister, what is our government doing to promote healthy eating Great and question. active lifestyle? Question. Thank you. <laughs> minister of Health, Long-Term Care. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, thank you to the member from Barrie for this very important question. And I want to start, I want to begin, Mr. Speaker, by acknowledging not just the dietitians that are here in the gallery with us today, but the thousands of dietitians right across this great province that are working so hard each and every day to keep Ontarians happy, Mr. Speaker. And it's important that we ask these questions about health care and other topics that are important to Ontarians, especially seeing as the opposition is not asking these important questions of the day, Mr. Speaker. And I want to say that, as we all know, dietitians play such a critical role in keeping people of all ages healthy and helping them to avoid chronic illnesses like diabetes and heart disease. Increasingly, we see people looking to prevention as a key to staying healthy, and we know that people in Ontario are interested in this approach. That's why our action plan for health care and our Healthy Kids and strategy sir. have both identified healthy living as a top priority. So thank you again to our dietitians. They do great work. They do great work across this province each thank and you. every day. Supplementary. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm very proud of our government's Healthy Kids strategy. On March the 18th, the sixth annual Dietitians' Day is being celebrated to recognize the work of dietitians and the value they bring to our health care system. By preventing and managing chronic diseases and promoting uh, recovery, dietitians are a cost-effective investment in the health care system. Promoting access to dietitians' care and supporting them at work at full scope of practice helps achieve health system goals. My constituents want to know how to access this very important information, and it turns out Ontarians can speak directly with a registered dietitian wow. for free by calling Eat Right Ontario. I know our government introduced legislation to promote healthy eating Question. and lifestyle. Through you, Mr. Speaker, I ask the minister, what will this legislation entail? Thank you, Minister. To the Associate Minister of Health and Long-Term Care. Associate Minister of Health and Long-Term Care. Well, the minister is here. 
Thank you, Speaker, and thank you to the member for this very important question. And she is right. This fall, our government did indeed reintroduce the Making Healthier Choices Act. If passed, the act will require restaurant chains, convenience stores, grocery stores, and other food service establishments with 20 or more locations to post the number of calories in standard food and beverage items, including alcohol. What this means, Mr. Speaker, is you will be able to walk into your favorite Tim Hortons and see the calories in an ice cap or a donut. And I believe this is about empowering Ontarians, about giving them the information they need so that they can make the right choice. I'm very excited by this bill. Uh, I know people across Ontario are looking forward to this legislation. Uh, the legislation is going through second reading right now, and I look forward to support from all members to make this law. Thank Thanks, you. sir. Thank you. New question. The member from Middlesex, uh, London, Middlesex, Thank you, Middlesex Speaker. London. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, my question is to the Premier. Premier, we learned yesterday that three senior officials from the Ontario Provincial Police Association took voluntary leaves during an ongoing police investigation. Premier, actions speak louder than words. Yep. The OPPA is working to maintain their integrity while you're working really hard to bring shame to the office of the Premier. Why have you not required Pat Sever and Jerry Loggy to step aside during the OPP investigation? Uh, thank you again. Uh, Thank you very much again, Speaker. I want to remind the member opposite that uh, the chief electoral officer has been very clear. There, he has made no finding of innocence or guilt. He, in fact, he says, I am uh, neither deciding to prosecute a matter nor determining anyone's guilt or innocence. Those decisions, respectively, for prosecutors and judges. I think, Speaker, that, that's something that's really important. I think all members should be very careful that they, uh, they're not making any assumptions uh, about uh, anyone being guilty uh, until they actually proven so in the court. And as we know, Speaker, there is a live investigation. There has been no charges laid. We should respect the process uh, and, uh, and let the independent authorities do their work as they are mandated to, to, to do so, because that is their job. Yes, and we should take that time, Speaker, to focus on issues that are important to our communities. I know the member opposite have important issues he wants. Thank you. Supplementary. Go back to the Premier. Premier, you've stood in this House claiming you are cooperating with the OPP. However, it's been over a month and you have yet to meet with the police. Average people who have nothing to hide would meet with the police as soon as possible, irregardless of their schedule. Premier, Premier, wouldn't you agree that delaying the meeting with the OPP is tantamount to interfering with the OPP investigation? I think if you're talking about hiding, what I, I think what uh, Ontarians wants to know is that uh, well, how many jobs, uh, 100,000 jobs uh, that uh, the opposition is going to cut. Uh, why are they hiding? Why are they not telling us exactly what those jobs are going to be? The last estimates, the Speaker, that we received that 22,700 of those proposed 100,000 jobs cuts are going to be in the education sector. The question is, is that still correct? Stop the clock, please. Um, I'm going to remind the minister I've said this on a couple of occasions where I'm hearing the answer. I need to see it directly, or at least uh, somewhere into the question, and I will uh, put that to him to uh, pull it back towards that. Absolutely, Speaker. And, and Speaker, the, uh, the, the point of the matter is that there are important issues that need to be discussed as it relates to our community. There are important issues that need to be discussed when it comes to building our communities up. We know that uh, the party opposite uh, only believes in, in, in cutting good, hardworking public service jobs uh, and not focusing what's important. Well, New question, the member from Kitchener, Waterloo. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, to the Premier. Uh, Premier, I hope you embrace this question on behalf of the citizens of Ontario. I also hope you answer it. The Premier says she's working with the police, but the Premier's aides are investigating her office, and her government are the ones that are at question. Speaker, we don't really know if she is cooperating because she's not answering any of our questions. Can the Premier tell Ontarians whether the Ontario Liberal campaign director, Pat Cerbera, has been interviewed by the police? Well, again, Mr. 
Speaker, the measure of uh, my cooperation with the authorities will happen as part of the investigation, Mr. Speaker. It's not a measure of, uh, of what I'm doing in this legislature because the investigation is not taking place in here. And I know the member opposite knows that, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. She knows full well that there has to be a separation between yeah. the political discussion that happens uh, in the legislature, Mr. Speaker, and, uh, and the investigation that is independent. And so that's why the investigation is taking place outside of the House. Again, to the Premier, actually, what happens in this legislature does matter. And if the Liberals are so insistent that they are cooperating with the police, will the Premier tell Ontarians exactly what assistance she's provided to the police and to Elections Ontario and explain what the investigators have requested and what has been turned over? Please. Mr. Speaker. Of course, what happens in this legislature matters. It matters very, very much, Mr. Speaker, and it matters that we not interfere with an investigation that is taking place independently of the legislature. So the questions that the member opposite is asking are really the stuff of the investigation, Mr. Speaker, and so that, that investigation is taking place outside of the House, and I will be and am cooperating with the authorities, Mr. Speaker. Can we question the member from Trinity Spadina? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I have a real question on government program. And my question is, uh, my question is to the minister responsible for Pan Am Games. The Pan and Parapan American Games are coming. Was just four months away. The excitement is building. I know many people in my riding of Trinity Spadina have bought tickets to the games. We also have a venue in my riding that is being refurbished for the games. The playing fields at U of T are being transformed into two world-class field hockey pitches. The fields are Ontario's first international caliber field hockey venue, they, and they will double the number of fields available for the sport in Greater Toronto Area. The facility is also expected to be, uh, to be the, high, the highest quality two-turf facility in Canada, according to the Field Hockey Canada. Speaker, can the minister tell us more about how we are preparing for the games? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. And I'd like to thank the member from Trinity Spadina for his great question on government program and policy. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we're in great shape when it comes to the Pan Am Pair Pan Am Games. So far, we've been able to sell almost 300,000 tickets. We have, we have 52,000 people who have signed up to volunteer. And, Mr. Speaker, as many of the members know, last week we unveiled our new medals for the Pan Am Pair Pan Am Games. And they're incredible medals. And in fact, we had a, a great collaborative effort between the arts sector. Christina Belcourt, a Made visual artist, uh, helped develop those uh, medals. And uh, like I, 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 uh, I spoke about last week, it's the first time Braille's been incorporated into the mails for any major game. Mr. Speaker, we are 17 Fridays away from the opening of these games. And uh, we're so proud of the fact that many of our buildings that are set up for these games are being used for community uh, use, including our Athletes Village, and I'll talk a little bit about that in the supplemental. Supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, Minister, to his, uh, for his answer. And I heard that... I'm not sure that the member heard me the first time, so I'm going to repeat it when the... When, when he's, everything's quiet, the member from Hamilton East, Stony Creek, come to order. Put your question, please. Fine. You know, I encourage the member across, if they have a question, please use their opportunity to ask those questions to the minister directly. <laughs> Not to use my time. The legacy of these games are what truly amazing. These new sports facilities are built for generations of Ontarians to enjoy. The venues will not be used for uh, will, will not only be used by our high performance athletes, but also by beginners and students who are just learning new sports. As a post game legacy, the Pan Am Fields will host a number of different sports in UFT. They will also they will they will add to the existing sports Question. facilities benefiting students on the campus and members of my community. Speaker, can the minister tell the member of this legislature about the legacy of the Athletes' Village will leave behind. Thank you, Minister. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to tell you a bit about the Athletes' Village. Um, this village uh, is part of a broader revitalization of the West Donlands and Toronto waterfront, and it's accelerated the pace of the development in that, in that area by 10 years. And the project, Mr. Speaker, includes 808 market housing units, 100 affordable housing units, and 253 affordable rental units. It also contains, for the first time, a residence for George Brown students. It's a 175,000 square foot, eight story building that will uh, be home to 500 students. Uh, per year and an 80,000 square foot YMCA uh, new facility. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the YMCA uh, facility includes a gymnasium, swimming pool, fitness studio, space for youth and community uh, accessible green roofs. 10% uh, uh, of the units will be fully Answer. accessible in the actual building, which I think is a, uh, an incredible accomplishment for this government. But most thank important, you. thank you, Mr. Thank you. No question, Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Good question. My question is the Premier. Your Chief of Staff, Pat Cerbera, is currently under OPP investigation involving the Sudbury bribery scandal, and yet she continues to have access to and ability to influence cabinet decisions and senior members of your inner circle. When three OPP staff became subjects of a police investigation, they immediately stepped down so as to not keep asserting their influence on that office and tarnishing the reputation of their association. Premier, why are you continuing to allow Pat Cerbera to stay in her position in the midst of a police investigation? Minister. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. And again, uh, Speaker, I remind the member uh, uh, opposite, and he's heard the answer before, and is that uh, we have something called presumption of innocence uh, in our in our system uh, of uh, of democracy. Uh, we should respect that. Uh, in fact, uh, the chief electoral officer restated that very clearly in his in his finding. And if you like, I can I can read that passage to him again uh, uh, again uh, during the supplementary. But Speaker, I think what we really need to focus on is issues that are important to our communities. I'm sure the member opposite has got a hospital that he wants to build in his community, and this will be a great opportunity for him to advocate on behalf of his community by speaking on those very important issues uh, and let uh, the police do its work, which is they're very much capable and responsible to do so. Because, Speaker, as, uh, as you very much appreciate, it will be highly inappropriate uh, if uh, we, as a government, interfere in that police Thank investigation. You. Thank uh, you. Thank you, Speaker. Back to the Premier. The people in my riding believe that law and order is a fundamental tenet of democracy, and no one, including the Premier, is above the law. Here, here. The OPP union put their membership and integrity first. You're not doing that. Your steadfast refusal to rise above your own political needs and put the interests of the public first is a serious breach of the integrity of your office. You are not above the law, Premier. You will, will you do the honourable thing and ask Ms. Cervera and Mr. Lahey to step down from their staff positions until the bribery investigation is complete? Speaker, the members are uh, absolutely correct. No, no one is above, of, above the law, nor this is right. a kangaroo court, Speaker. We need to make sure that there is a process in place, and we should respect that process. And the process, uh, Speaker, dictates that people in our system are innocent until they are proven guilty, uh, Speaker. They are not to be judged as the members opposite are trying to judge certain individuals when, no, not, when not even a criminal charge uh, has been laid. As I said, and I'll read again what the Chief Electoral Officer said in his own ruling, I am neither deciding to prosecute a matter nor determining anyone's guilt or innocence. These decisions are respectively for prosecutors and judges. I ask the members opposite, let those prosecutors and judges do their job. Thank, Thank you very much, Speaker. The question the member from Hamilton East Stony Creek. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Can the Premier tell us how many of the Premier's staff and inner circle, including the Deputy Premier herself, who seems to know about your conversations with your soul, have been interviewed by the OPP Anti Rackets Division? Minister of Community Safety and Correctional Services. Minister of Community Safety and Correctional Services. Thank you very much, Speaker. Again, I remind the member opposite we should not be talking about a live police investigation in the House. We should focus on issues that are important uh, to, to the people uh, of, of Ontario. 
That is the responsibility that has been given to us, Speaker. The Chief Electoral Officer has been uh, very, very clear that he is not making any, uh, no judgment in terms of innocence uh, or, or guilt. Uh, of any individual, and he's asked us, Speaker, in his report uh, that we should let the prosecutors and judges do their job. I, I respectfully, I humbly ask all members uh, to respect the ruling of the Chief Electoral Officer, that we respect the work that, the, uh, that, our, uh, that OPP is doing in that regards, and not meddle into a live police investigation. Thank you. Thank you. Supplementary. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Uh, the Premier keeps insisting that she won't answer questions because there's a police investigation ongoing. Who, Speaker, who on the Premier's staff and who at the Ontario Liberal Party have the police requested interviews with and who has been interviewed? And, Speaker, I'm having visions. Gas plants, orange, e-health. I'm having visions. It's like an instant replay, Speaker. Here we go again. This is scandal number seven. Keep going, guys. You're doing a great job. Minister. Well, thank you very much, Speaker. Uh, again, I think the member member should uh, should be focusing his visions on on minimum wage. Should be focusing his vision on supporting personal support workers. He should be focusing his vision on child, supporting our child care workers. He should be focusing his vision on building good public transit. He should be focusing his vision on making sure that there are good paying jobs in our community, Speaker. That is that is what uh, that is what Ontarians have asked us to work on, Speaker. Uh, it's, it's 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 a very sad day when we see that even the NDP has, uh, has stooped so low that they fo focus on just scandal mongering. Speaker, we know there's a process that's ongoing. We know there's a live police investigation. We should respect that police investigation yes, and let the OPP do its work. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. New question, the member from Cambridge. Thank you, Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Natural Resources and Forestry. It's a very important policy question, one that I know that my constituents in Cambridge care very deeply about. Oh, here, here. This is a time of year that Ontario secondary and post-secondary students look for job opportunities for the summer ahead. In previous years, the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry has been a leading ministry for providing summer jobs to youth in Ontario. Early last year, my own son Alex applied for such a position and spent his spring and summer as a fire ranger. Wonderful. Youth in my riding in Cambridge are looking to learn new skills and develop real employment ex experience that they can carry with them into the workplace. However, many youth are concerned about whether or not they'll be able to find a summer job this year. Mr. Speaker, through you to the Question. minister, would the minister please inform the House of whether or not his ministry will again be hiring young people this summer? Minister National Resources and Forestry. Speaker, thank you very much, and I want to thank the, uh, the member from Cambridge for uh, giving me an opportunity to highlight this. Uh, last week in Thunder Bay, I was fortunate to be part of an event out at the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry Firebase where we were able to highlight for students who are looking to summer job opportunities. MNRF's program, once again, this year, will be offering somewhere in the neighbourhood of 1,900 summer youth wow. employment opportunities wow. right across the province. Speaker, it's important to note that those job opportunities will be in 30 different communities or in close proximity to 30 different communities right across the province of Ontario. I highlight for my northern colleagues and friends that about 800 of that 1,900 yes, will be in northern Ontario. One of the programs is a youth stewardship program, uh, Speaker, and given our ministry's commitment to biodiversity, to wetlands and invasive species, it's very important work that they're doing as well. Yeah. Speaker, and thank you to the Minister for his response and his commitment to providing summer jobs to youth in Ontario. I know from knocking on doors in Cambridge and North Dumfries that many parents and youth were disappointed when the opposition Conservatives voted against the youth job strategy in 2013. So they are happy to hear that our government remains committed to helping young people find summer jobs. I also know that parents and young people want to find summer youth employment that provides meaningful experience, builds their resumes, and gives them real hands-on experience in a field of work that interests them. Many youth in my riding are looking for summer jobs that move them out from behind a desk, out of the offices, and into Ontario's vast natural environment. Speaker, again sure. through you. Will the minister please tell this House how his ministry is providing summer job opportunities that provides hands-on experience Thank in you. Ontario's great outdoors? 
Minister. Speaker, thank you. Once again, I thank the member from Cambridge for the question. Speaker, I really want to highlight one of the programs uh, that we offer through summer employment. It's called the First Nations Natural Resources Youth Employment Program. I had the opportunity last year. The Confederation College works to provide training. They're employed through MNR, and I had an opportunity to go to that graduation ceremony last summer down at Marina Park in Thunder Bay. When I listen to those young men and women speak at that graduation ceremony, I can tell you that it was very emotional and very moving. We actually witnessed, I would say, and I'm not overstating it at all, young men and women who, through this work experience, had just participated in something that for them was very transformative. I don't think I'm overstating it at all. This program had availed them of an opportunity to truly engage in something that they felt incredibly passionate about. I think people who work in MNRF take that with them no matter what their jobs are. And even if they don't stay in MNRF when they leave this ministry, they've learned life skills and have had great mentorship Answer. opportunities. This particular program and opportunity for me was wonderful. And I want to thank the college and John Hatton from the college and MNRF for providing that opportunity through this particular program for Aboriginal youth. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. To the Premier, <clears throat> three senior OPPA members came under invest investigation and did the right thing by stepping aside and ensuring that they, can, they can't influence the uh, process that's being investigated. Your Deputy Chief of Staff, Pat Sabrera, is also under investigation for bribery, but continues to have access to your office, your staff, ministers, and civil services influencing public policy. By refusing to show leadership in your own office, you are dragging your own office and our democracy into the muck. Premier, when will you end this travesty and remove Pat Sabrera and Jerry Lahey Jr. from the positions under investigation? Thank you very much, Minister, and I, uh, I thank the member opposite for the question. And again, if he's going to ask the same question that all his uh, colleagues have asked over the question period, he'll get the same answer, uh, Speaker, which is that uh, this is a live police matter and it's been investigated uh, by the police, Speaker, and we should respect. I know, Speaker, I, I know the members' community, uh, Storma Dundas, South Glengarry, very well, and I know there's some really some important issues in this community, and I'm surprised that the member opposite is not focusing on talking about jobs in our in his community. Uh, I know the previous member, Jim Burnell, who was a great member of this legislature, would not spend, waste any time but to talk about, about his own community, and it's, it's sad to see that the member opposite, when he had the opportunity through a question, is not doing that. This is a, this is a police matter, Speaker. We should respect that. We should let them do their job. Answer. As the Premier said it again and again, she's cooperating, uh, and uh, I think that's the proper course, and we should focus back on issues that are important to our respective Thank communities. You. Thank you, Speaker. My residents of Stormont, as I South Glengarry, want a government that follows the law. So in due time, we know why the RCMP will ex execute a search on the OPPA. But you have known for months that your staff is under investigation for bribery. In Canada's criminal code, bribery includes, includes public appointments and is punishable by up to 14 years in prison. Everyone but you realize this is, this is a serious crime. Yet you and your government stand by two Liberal operatives who are on tape apparently doing just that. When will you show some leadership in your own office and remove the stench of bribery by having Pat Tavera and Jerry Lahey Jr. step aside until the investigation is complete? Minister. Uh, speaker, uh, I'm sure the member opposite know the law of the land is that you're, uh, you're presumed innocent until found guilty. And in this case, Speaker, there's been no charges laid. Uh, the, the chief electoral officer is absolutely clear. He's not making any determination of innocence or guilt, and he's actually asking all of us to respect uh, the process and let the prosecutors and judges do their work. I ask them, uh, the member opposite that they should also respect the law and let the police do its work. Thank you, Speaker. Minister of the Environment and uh, Climate yeah. Change, on a point of just order. Just a quick point of order. I just our page captain today, uh, Inaya's parents are here and, and her family. Uh, that Sadia, Yosef, Imam, and it was Minya who was ha heckling the opposition earlier, Mr. <laughs> Speaker. We have a deferred vote on a motion of interim supply. Call in the members. This will be a five-minute bell.
Would all members please take their seats? On March 9th, Mr. Nackley moved that the Minister of Finance be authorized to pay the salaries of the civil servants and other necessary payments pending the voting of supply for the period commencing April 1, 2015 and ending on September 30, 2015. Such payments to be charged to the proper appropriation for the 2015-16 fiscal year following the voting of supply. All those in favour, please rise one at a time and be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Souza. Mr. Souza. Mr. Nackley. Mr. Nackley. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Shirelli. Mr. Shirelli. Madame Mayor. Madame Mayor. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Matthews. Ms. Matthews. Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Hoskins. Ms. Sandals. Ms. Sandals. Mr. Duguid. Mr. Duguid. Mr. Quinter. Mr. Quinter. Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole. Mr. Takar. Mr. Takar. Mr. Bardinetti. Mr. Bardinetti. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Quadri. Mr. Quadri. Mr. Orzetti. Mr. Orzetti. Mr. Gravel. Mr. Gravel. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. Murray. Mr. Murray. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Leal. Mr. Leal. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Zimmer. Mr. Zimmer. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Balkas. Mr. Balkas. Ms. Albanese. Mr. Dixon. Mr. Dixon. Ms. Manga. Ms. Manga. Mr. Crack. Mr. Crack. Ms. Wong. Ms. Wong. Ms. Hunter. Ms. Hunter. Mr. Sergio. Mr. Sergio. Mr. Morrow. Mr. Morrow. Ms. Jassy. Ms. Jassy. Mr. Del Duca. Mr. Del Duca. Ms. Domerlo. Ms. Domerlo. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Baker. Mr. Baker. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Dong. Mr. Dong. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Koala. Ms. Koala. Madame Lalonde. Madame Lalonde. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. McGarry. Mrs. McGarry. Ms. McMahon. Ms. McMahon. Mr. Milchin. Mr. Milchin. Ms. Ms. Naidu Harris. Ms. Naidu Harris. Mr. Potts. Mr. Potts. Mr. Rinaldi. Mr. Rinaldi. Mr. Renil. Mr. Renil. Mr. Thibault. Mr. Thibault. All those opposed, please rise one at a time and be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Miller Perry Sound Muskoka. Mr. Miller Perry Sound Muskoka. Mr. Dunlop. Mr. Dunlop. Ms. Jones. Ms. Jones. Mrs. Monroe. Mrs. Monroe. Ms. Scott. Ms. Scott. Mr. Yurick. Mr. Yurick. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols. Ms. Marteau. Ms. Marteau. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. Pettipiece. Mr. Pettipiece. Ms. Fife. Ms. Fife. Mr. Should be song. Mr. Be song. Ms. Horvath. Ms. Horvath. Mr. Vanto. Mr. Vanto. Ms. Denova. Ms. Denova. Madame Jelena. Madame Jelena. Mr. Tabbins. Mr. Tabbins. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Mr. Nadishak. Mr. Nadishak. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Armstrong. Mr. Singh. Mr. Singh. Ms. Forrester. Ms. Forrester. Mr. Mantha. Mr. Mantha. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Gates. Mr. Gates. Ms. Gretzky. Ms. Gretzky. Ms. French. Ms. French. The ayes being 54 and the nays being 38, I declare the motion carried. There are no deferred votes. This House stands recessed in p.m. this afternoon.